just concerned that we're not gonna be able to see everything in the camera, all right? Which I'll just have to move it a little bit. We'll see how it does, all right? So um, let's go ahead and here we go. So I'm gonna start out with the vine charcoal. And the vine charcoal sometimes breaks into little, little nubbins and that's fine. Another thing you can do is you can actually, once your like chamois cloth is uh, nice and filthy, it's actually a really great tool to lay down some initial values. So I like to kind of fold it to its grimiest part. Mm, yes. And I can use that to sort of think about where things are gonna be because it draws with a sort of like gray cloud. I can say, okay, well, this is the candlestick. How far down is it? You know, and I can kind of look at that and I can say, okay, well, it kind of ends right here. Right, this is, this is a sort of general shape of the candlestick, kind of comes up here, how far up, how much space. I can just sort of like try to see its angle. And then I can say, okay, over here, I've got some, some shapes coming in from the side. And I'm drawing with these, this tool, but I'm just kind of like really just laying in, like this is kind of like the idea of using that, um, that yellow pencil, right? It doesn't leave a lot of mark. And so you can be kind of like, you don't have to be perfect with it, right? You can kind of say, okay, well, here's this goblet back here. And then over here, I have this like bit of fabric coming off here. And then, you know, this is starting to be the composition that I have, you know, and I can make changes here. It's not too hard. Um, I'm sure once my chamois gets even filthier, it'll be even better at this. Uh, okay. All right. So now that I have like some general shapes on the paper, I can start going in. And I want to have that full value range, which means that I'm going to have dark darks, light lights, um, and everything in between. Okay, so I'm going to start out, and I'm going to start out fairly loose, right? Um, keep in mind that the base of this is a cylinder, and so we have that ellipse. So I don't see the back of it, but just know that it goes all the way around, and it would form an ellipse if I could see all the way through. So I want to get that, capture that curve. It has a little step up here, and then um, I can see a little bit of that back of the curve, and then I can see that it kind of comes up to a point got my big left hand covering up the drawing while I do this. Also know that this candelabra is um, uh, symmetrical. So I really do want to try to like hold on to that symmetry in my drawing, even though it's at an angle and it's pointed downward, right? That's not any less symmetrical for being angled differently, you know? I'm just going to try and get like the general shapes here. Now I'm starting out using outline, but at the end of this drawing, I'm not gonna actually have much in the way of outline at all. In fact, um, outline is a sort of um, mental state where we kind of create barriers that are hard barriers over things that are in fact have no outline, right? You know, you're not wearing a big black outline around your lips, you know, that's not your, um, I don't know about you, but it's not usually your style. I'm realizing this needs to actually go down a little bit. So I'm going to make some adjustments here. Uh, yeah, it's, I started too low. It's okay. Charcoal is amazing. And if you have a mistake in your drawing, you can just smudge it out. You know, it's very forgiving. I'm going to start actually start this a little bit higher up. I think this, this part ends in the right place. Um, it just, it wasn't long enough, right? This component right here. And I'm gonna encourage you guys to actually draw along with me. So, um, you know, you don't have to use this particular cropping that I picked. You can also look at a different one. That's perfectly fine. But if it's helpful for you to draw with me in this moment, we can look at the same one together and just draw it together. I think that that will work really well. And um, I think that it might be helpful for, 
Like it's it's really tempting to just put it all off to later, but later is an idea and not a reality until it becomes a hard, cold reality. So keeping that symmetry in mind. Okay. I want to make sure that that angle is good. Now I may have made it a little bit more angled than it really is. It's almost totally vertical. Great. Okay, well, something that can help you is you can actually just draw the line of it. Well, we'll make adjustments as we go. Um, I don't want to get too caught up in the candlestick since I'm going to be changing things. I'm also going to be drawing this fabric. So that's kind of like a major component in these is that there's this draped fabric, which is interesting and also kind of tricky, right? So, and I've got this, um, little piece of shiny business, challenging. Just making changes. We've got this interesting saw blade here coming in at an angle. We have another one coming in here at this angle. So really just kind of, this is a sort of preliminary stage of this drawing. Now what I want to do is I want to start adding in more values and I want to kind of build it up just like we did those value scales. So I have my sort of general shape of things and I want to maybe do some corrections. Um, this silly candelabra is a real pain to draw. Um, great. Try to refine that edge a little bit. Make sure you are constantly looking up at your still life. If your eyes are on the page for too long, it's a sign that you're actually drawing what's in your mind and not what's on the what's in front of you. And our goal here is to learn the art of drawing what's in front of you. Don't worry, there'll always be images in your mind for you to draw, but the skill of looking and drawing what you're seeing is hard one, and it really does actually translate to all the other kinds of drawing. Now, I know that this shape is quite dark, all right? So I wanna make some, um, I'm gonna go ahead and shade it in. So, And so what I'm gonna do is instead of leaving an outline there that um, I started out with, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna shade up to that edge. So instead of it being like an, a line around the shape, it's really gonna be more of an edge between two values, right? So I know this is fairly dark, I'm gonna shade it in. I know that there's a highlight right down the middle of it like there's a reflective light down the middle. I'm gonna leave that white. Um, okay. Because while we're building it up actively, we can also still erase into it, right? Um, it's just a matter of like, it's a question of more of like how you got started on your drawing, you know? So we'll still be able to make changes and erase things. So don't, don't stress. All right. 
Now I'm going to start building in some of the shadows on this uh, fabric. So where, where are the shadows that we have, right? I see that there's a sort of edge and that edge is actually, this is a little higher, right? So the edge kind of comes through the neck of the thing, right? It kind of comes up a little. Now it could be that I didn't make my neck long enough. That's also probably possible. My symmetry is off. Professor? Yeah. Um, sorry to interrupt. Is there any way that you can make the still life a tiny bit bigger? The still life itself? Yes, it yeah. can. Here. Please. Thank you. <laughs> Let's let us balance the tide. Is that better? Oh, perfect. Yes. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Um, also, you can also see this on canvas. This is number what, 32? Yeah, so but like, like open it up on your phone or something. Here it is, though. Is that better? Up it, yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. Let's just, there we go. Thank you. Just trying to like look at your crop because like it's going to be different if I do it. <laughs> no, it's, it's true. It's true. Um, and I I really appreciate you saying stuff like that because I uh, could just would just keep going, you know? And I do actually, the whole point is like I want you to see what I'm looking at, right? I wouldn't have gone to the trouble to run this like weird software in the background if I didn't want you guys to be able to see what I was looking at, you know? That's like the whole goal here. Now there's a shadow underneath it. And the shadow has its own shape. Right? And bring it up here. And then I have a more shadow right there. Sometimes in this drawing, you will actually have lines, but the lines are, are things that you actually observe. So for example, here I have a fold of the fabric, right, coming down. And I, I see that kind of as a line, so I want to kind of do that. Sometimes you'll have a line that's just sort of an edge of value. It might not be a whole lot. Whereas along this edge, we have a shadow that is actually shaped like a line, which is kind of cool. All right, so we're just kind of, we're just kind of working on this. And just, I want to think about, sometimes uh, drawing fabric is something that's a little challenging for people. Um, and one way to think about fabric is often it's just a collection of different clumped triangles. Like the way that a tr like fabric drapes is it's helpful to think about it as just a bunch of triangles. Like I have a triangle right here. I have a another triangle right here. I have like another triangle right here and then kind of like a triangle like right there. And so those are just, and then I have another little triangle down here. It's just sort of the think about the fabric in forms of like a variety of different triangles because that's how it tends to fall. I'm sure if you crumbled up into a little ball, you might still get triangles actually. Tell me how it goes. So here I have a line that starts out fairly thick, tapers to almost nothing, and then gets in larger again. And that is just a sort of single fold that comes down. I'm just kind of trying to map out the shapes of those shadow places on this fabric. I'm not gonna beat myself up if this is like, I didn't crop it exactly the way I cropped it on my paper versus if it just, um, this is a little bit bigger on this side, it's not a big deal. Got a line coming up here. Back here we have some shadow. We also want to emphasize that this is white fabric with some distinctly dark objects on it, right? And so we want to have a difference in value between the white objects on the fabric and the fabric itself. So I don't want to ever go too, too dark with the, with the fabric shadows because they aren't actually that much dark. Or if they are, just make sure that you make these other elements that are dark shadows, like like for example, the shadow here, 
Seems pretty dark. Oh, you can't even see my mouse. Can you see my, you can't see my mouse, can you? No, all right. Don't worry about it. The shadow here on the candle candlestick, there's a difference between this shadow on the metal that's extremely deep, and this also fairly deep shadow, but it's on the white. There's a difference between those two shadows. That's all I'm trying to say. Now here, this is a pretty white piece right here, and I don't want a really heavy line coming down it. So what I do want, instead of a heavy line coming down it, is I want there to be an indication that there's value on the other side of that line, right? And simply by shading in that edge a little bit, now this feels more like a white piece of drape, right? And in fact, the whole area back there is a little bit darker. So let's just tone it in a little bit. Good. And I might need to make this a little bit steeper. There we go. And I'll just kind of feather that line, right? And then also here, I have a really deep shape inside of this mug. And charcoal is incredibly forgiving. So I'm really just trying to kind of patch in these values and shapes, knowing that I may need to erase them and move them. And that's really fine. Also notice how I'm using my whole arm to draw. I'm not just using my fingers, kind of holding the charcoal with all of my hand. This will give you better lines. Doesn't feel like as much control as you're used to, but believe me, it actually is, it's the right amount of control to have like movement and energy. So here I have a little bit of, uh, the, the thing is kind of pressing into the fabric here. So I wanna capture a little bit of that soft edged shadow. And then coming here up, I have a really soft shadow. These are my like my one tones, right? This is my really, really light highlights. Just a little bit of shadow right there against that bright white. You know, this is very subtle business over here. Um, I also have this um, shadow coming up. So this shape here on top is a little bit wider. So I wanna kind of tone in this area a little bit. And sometimes if you like, for example, here, I have a place in the fabric where it's kind of, it's it's curved like this, right? It's kind of rounded. And so in that moment, what I wanna do is I wanna think about like, if I'm gonna draw lines across it, if I, if I control the strokes in the direction that the fabric is, is curving, just like we did with the cross contour drawings, um, it's gonna show a little bit more of its volume, right? So here it's bubbled up again. have this like stripe of light and you know what's great about folded fabric is that while it's kind of tricky in some ways even if you get it like a little bit wrong though it's still going to kind of look like folded fabric this is like the advantage right like you can't really screw it up it's going to look like folded fabric if you if you kind of follow these like rules here and you really try to kind of see some of these shapes It will look like folded fabric. That's a miracle. All right, so here we go. I've got like a little bit folded more folded down here. And a little bit of, okay. Things are coming together. And this, this shape is actually quite dark. 
the goblet. Not the darkest thing, but I can adjust those tones as we build up towards them. I see there's a sh darker space on it right there, right? And then this area here, it has highlights and shadows, but it's all kind of in that mid-tone. So we'll, we'll work back and forth on this. But looking at it, I do have an extra dark shape that kind of comes in like this, right? This is a little bigger. There we go. So this is kind of coming together. And I want to remind people that if I, I, I've been told that I draw really quickly, um, especially if you're following along with me. And so I just want to remind people that if the drawing along with the teacher part is helpful to you, you can go back and look at these recordings. I'm going to be posting these recordings. I'm going to continue to post these recordings. They are for you to look at, to help you. And so you can actually open the recording up and pause it. You know, because it's not just for people who miss class, right? If, if you did come to class and you're like, wait a second, like, how did she get from this stage to this stage? And you want to just look at that recording again, like, that's what they're for. So, um, and you can kind of, even if you like have to take a break and you like are, are doing it like later in the weekend, you can just like open up that recording again and you can kind of have it play in the background while you um, work on your assignment, you know, because I know people manage their time however they need to. And um, that's what that is for. Okay, so um, this is coming together. So now at this point, I want to do a little bit of blending. Okay, I've got got my like some main values down. Um, I'm going to want to push and pull some of those values, but in the meantime, I'm going to actually lay down some. Um, I'm going to smooth down it a little bit. Now, I for a long time I was like really not interested in blending. I don't know why. I thought I could just lay the value down right away, and I like that immediacy, you know, and. Um, that's good and all. It has its place, but I think that the, the blending can really make a drawing feel kind of polished. And so I'm just, I'm cleaning up against the edge of this. Um, I'm just using my chamois cloth here on the edge. And I really want to think about what that edge is shaped like. I think this feels pretty good along this side. So I I just, an emphasis here is like, I'm, I'm erasing with the chamois, but I'm actually just I'm not really erasing, I'm really just drawing a different edge with that chamois. And I feel like there's some angle business here that's a little bit strange. Maybe that's a little better, hang on. And then it flares out quite a bit more. And I give my, my lips lemons, that thing that I tell you never to do. Just don't, it's not really a sharp corner, right? <sighs> um, so anyhow, um, at this point now I'm going, and then kind of moving back and forth between my tools. Like I've got my, my thing sort of set down and I'm just gonna start trying to like resolve these edges. And I could really use my blending tool to kind of like refine those edges as well as smoothing them. So Got some darker shadows across the neck right there. 
This is the, uh, the ASMR portion of the class. Um, and I think about where I have any deeper shadows and go in and pop those in a little harder. So along this edge here, it's quite, quite deep. Um, here I actually have a little, a little like lift little collar on it right there and so um, that's reflecting light differently and it's a little darker right there at that collar. You can see how I'm like not coloring it in all the way black because there is some shininess to this right and I do want to capture some of that shininess. Oh! Charcoal just broke. Let's go. It's not a big deal if your charcoal breaks. It's not a problem at all. But like, pick up the piece off the floor, or you'll smash it into the floor, and it will make a little black spot in the carpet. You know, like like it happens. But like, don't leave the little pieces of charcoal on your carpet floor. I think that's a bad idea. Um, do not recommend one out of one out of five. Although whether or not you rub charcoal into your carpet or um, for that matter, um, India ink, Sumi ink, I, I you know I'm not it's not something I'll be able to know that you've done. So you know your shame can be between you and your your family. Be like I don't know, are you living like a slob? And you'd be like oh, just a, just a little bit, guys. It's fine. Don't worry about me. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So I really want to get like a sort of smooth tone there. Um, I think that's coming together. It's starting to look a little bit more rounded. Um, um, looking at the symmetry of it, I think that maybe I put, I feel like maybe this side is a little bit more accurate to the shape and this side, the bulge part is a little bit lower than I want it to be. So in the sake of making it more symmetrical, I'm just shifting the weight of that um, thick part up a hair. Okay. So I think that helped. Yeah. Yeah, I think that did help. Okay. So I'm going to continue along in that vein. And one thing that I want to emphasize here is that I'm working across the page. I don't want to get too much detail in one part of the composition. I gave this some attention because I, I think it's the darkest part. It's like clearly the focus point of this image. But at the same time, I want to bring the image to the same level of finishedness everywhere, okay? So this is something that people really struggle with, actually. And because um, there's an impulse to be like, okay, well, I'm gonna render this perfectly. And you're like, okay, well, well, great. Like you've perfectly rendered a mug, but but you're now, now you have to, for your drawing to look finished, you have to render everything to that same level or else it will look unfinished. And so you've basically set yourself a really impossible task. Whereas something like this, like, I don't have to render this even more, you know, I can kind of like, but I want to bring everything up to this level of render. Does that make sense? You know, and so um, try to work everywhere and regularly move to different parts of the image so that they, every, the whole image kind of becomes more finished as a whole, instead of putting a lot of emphasis and energy into finishing one little component of it. I know that that one's that that particular bit of advice is really tricky for some people, but I, I I stand by it. I think it makes a big difference, and um, and it can be really upsetting to like realize that you know something is proportionally off, but you can't move it because it's so uh, beautifully rendered, and you can't like bring yourself to, to change it at that point because it's so far along, but you didn't realize that it was a little bit off until farther along, you know, it's just. Okay, so this goblet's looking a little weird. So I'm gonna kind of cinch it in a little bit. The, um, mouth of the goblet comes out a little farther, I think. So I'm going to bring this line down a little bit. OK. 
Okay. And looking at the foot of the goblet, what I see is that the outer edge is the darker part. And again, this is still an ellipse, you know, but it's a very round ellipse. And so that's a little bit tricky to draw, but I'll do the best I can, you know. Um, and I see that the saw blade overlaps on top of it. So I need to make my saw blade come up a little bit, a little bit closer to that shape. And same here. Okay, so things are coming along. Starting to look more rendered. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in with my blending tool and I'm gonna start to blend out some of this fabric. Okay, and I just, the fabric is pretty smooth. And so the shadows on it are pretty smooth. I'm gonna, basically I'm gonna try and hit the, the highlights first because I don't want, I already have my blending stump is already dirty. So I wanna kind of blend with less on the stump and then I'll blend in with the darks. And I find that like, um, that'll kind of maintain a sort of equilibrium on the blending stump, you know? If I move from the dark areas and then I wanna blend the highlight area, um, I'm gonna have maybe too much charcoal on my stump and that's a little bit harder to manage. Of course, um, you can always sharpen your blending stump. That's always allowed, you know? Um, you sharpen your blending stump, not using a pencil sharpener. What, any ideas? What do you sharpen your blending stump with? Sandpaper? Yes. Yes, sandpaper. Um, I uh, tried to sharpen, I forgot. And I tried to sharpen mine with a uh, pencil sharpener. I just wanna let you know that it did not go well. This is what happened, okay? So, um, yeah, I had, I had forgotten about the, the, the sandpaper fizz and it had been a minute since I used the blending stump because I, you know, whatever. And I tried to sharpen it with a pencil sharpener. I was like, oh boy, this is not the right tool. This is, this is definitely not the right tool for the job. Oh boy, oh boy. All right, so I'm just kind of coming around here. And I'm just, I'm just trying to lay in some of these like really soft shadows to just give it a little bit more of a sort of even base tone. Um, that I can kind of work with here. Um, I'm still looking at the thing while I do this, right? I'm still kind of thinking about the directions of my marks. I'm not just smudging it out, right? I'm trying to actually smudge with intention here, right? This is a this is a specific directions for a specific piece of fabric, and I want to try to capture that. Okay. Um, these are some really soft blends up here, so let's. I got another soft blend coming in from that side. It's like origami, you know, sometimes in origami they have like hard folds and soft folds. Um, I guess if you get into like really, really fancy origami. This is also buffing uh, the charcoal into the paper a little bit. And so what this does is it kind of, kind of once, it, once it's buffed into the paper, it doesn't tend to uh, move quite as much. And so it's easier to layer on top of it. So this creates a sort of like under layer. I started out with this as a line, 
down here, but I really don't want it to be an outline. I really want it to be an edge between a dark shape and a light shape. And so I'm working to kind of bring that to, to completion here. I really do want it to be a light shape edge and then a dark shape edge. And it's just a matter of like bringing the shading right up to that edge, okay? Um, I also wanna look at those like darks and then the much darker darks, right? So I have a, a really dark shadow on the bottom here. I also have a darker shape across the um, little saw where the shadow is cast on it from there. And um, I have some mid shadows right in here. So let's, let's pump those up a little bit too. So now I'm kind of in like a good middle space. I, I want to kind of like work in my sort of medium shadows. I kind of buffed in my darker shadows and that's really great and all, but now I want to buff in my, my medium shadows and kind of smooth that out a little bit. Just remember you are also still drawing with the blending stump when you use it like this. Um, you can actually use that charcoal that you have on the blending stump to like put in a couple different folds. Um, Because if I want to have like a really good rich tone, having that smooth surface to, that, to, that's been blended in allows me to layer better. So here, this is just going to be an issue of layering. Um, so here goes, just going to kind of move, leaving a little bit of white edge along the lip of the mug of the chalice because it's there. And so I want to make sure, I don't want it to actually stand all the way up to the edge. I'm going to leave it as a white line edge instead of a dark line edge. And I think that's going to be really helpful in making it feel reflective in this moment. Now we'll spend some time actually talking about reflective objects specifically. So there's that. Um, good. And I think that sometimes for some of these like smooth metallic objects, this, um, process of blending can really um, make it seem even more metallic and smooth. Okay. That also diminished the sort of appearance of a harsh edge. All right, so now what I wanna do is I wanna bring out my, um, oh, my kneaded eraser. Where? Um, hold, hold the phone, guys. I don't know where my needed eraser is. Well, I have this eraser. It's not the one I want, though. Um, hold down. You guys, I must have left my needed eraser in my other drawing classroom, and it's probably in the trash right now. Because let me tell you, that needed eraser looked like trash. Like it looked like it had been through uh, hell, and it did not look like an art supply. It looked like a dirty wad of bubble gum. And so I imagine if anyone found it, they were like, "Ah, uh, this is this is garbage." <laughs> And they would probably not have been very wrong, right? So I don't have a needed eraser today, but good thing I'm gonna live without it. So um, instead of erasing with my needed eraser, I'm gonna try and erase with my um, vinyl eraser. We'll see how it does. It's not as good as the um, needed eraser. Oh, another eraser. Oh, goodness. All right, well, we're gonna live that vinyl eraser lifestyle here and see how it does. Now, um, the vinyl eraser is gonna more likely to get dirty and I'll have to clean it off to get another spot, but it should be able to give me a couple of bright white highlights. So for example, 
on the inside of this mug right here, I have a bright light right there. So let's see if I can get that. Oh yeah. Oh, it works. Okay, so we've been primarily working subtractively, I mean, sorry, additively, we've been adding charcoal to the paper, right? And now I want to start bringing in some highlights back. And so I'm gonna start using a little bit of my eraser tool as a drawing tool. Um, it's not as good as your kneaded eraser. One thing you can do with the kneaded eraser is you can kind of like pat at the charcoal instead of buffing it in back and forth. Um, that's a really great technique. Um, you see how it's immediately blackened. Good old magic eraser. There's only so much control I can get with this guy. It's okay. Make it work. The things I don't like erasing, right? Just kidding. Um, there's a really bright highlight right here, right on the bottom there. I really want that to be like a bright white. Um, this area was pretty smooth. Not much in the way of a highlight here. And then right here we have some real darks. Like this might be one of our true black areas right there, you know? So like try to figure out where your blackest blacks are. Same with here. This is a drawing process that can take a long time, right? You can start to, you can see how you can really start to get like caught up in some of these details, you know? You're like, okay, well, you know, I can perfect this and I can, Kind of tweak that and I can kind of refine this edge and I can keep like working at it and poking at it and working at it and and that's fine and all but I think that um we're in the sort of like more drawings is more so we don't we actually want to keep keep the ball rolling you know just just once it gets to the level of being finished instead of like bringing it to like perfection we're just going to move on to the next drawing you know We'll say good enough. Good enough for that. You get in class. Okay. Yeah, this uh, the vinyl eraser is really not cutting it. So I'm really going to have to work additively. I don't get to work subtractively at all. Wow. Um, that's okay. The chamois cloth is also a bit of a eraser. So I'm going to use that too to um, smudge in some of more of my values here as we are building this up. So, um, just kind of softening some of the edges here in my um, okay. Now I think that this area is a little bit um, a little rough. Kind of get this in order here. So this is actually a darker edge. It tapers into nothing. And then this is kind of like a nice little triangle here. And then there's a couple of other folds right in here. It's really soft little folds right there. And then There's this shape here. Okay. 
So I want to differentiate between the shadow of the uh, candelabra and the, the actuality of it. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to blend out the shadow a little bit. And um, I may actually pump up some of my darkest darks with a little bit of compressed charcoal. So once I'm like really confident about where they are and how dark they are, I'm going to grab a little bit of compressed charcoal. This is a soft pencil charcoal. And I think that this might not show well on camera. Let's see. Actually, it's not showing at all. Well, great. Uh, let me lighten my exposure and you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, let me see if I can do this and have it show. Does that look any darker? Just a hair, just a skosh darker. Um, so sometimes using these compressed charcoals can be a really good way to kind of bring out some of those deepest tones. So here I have like a really dark edge and um, I've been working with vine charcoal up until this point, but I find that sometimes, especially because I can get this to easily to more of a point than the vine charcoal, I can use that a little bit better to get in some of that detail work, especially that dark detail work. Okay, so that's like a nice little trick right there. Um, looking at this, I'm realizing, let's, let's bring the saturation down a little bit. This is a little bit, this is a little overwhelming. Um, realizing that this um, actually needs to be quite a bit darker. That it is actually substantially darker. And that this, needs to be a hair darker too, because I need to differentiate this uh, base more from this shadow, right? I feel like the shadow is like a decent level of darkness, whereas this needs to be darker. And so I need to have like distinct tones in that part, okay? And I, of those elements, I think that the, um, this is the darkest element. So I'm gonna go in, ooh, let me just draw willy nilly, okay. Um, I'm going to go in here and really darken in the saw blade a little bit right there. Because there's a deeper shadow on it. And I want it to actually be like a rich dark right there. Um, where these two saw blades overlap, it's also in shadow. It's not a highlight. Um, um, there's also this a little triangle of, uh, right here. I didn't really get, okay. Just correcting that, okay. And you can work the compressed charcoal in with the vine charcoal. It's not like super easy, but it's not impossible either. I'm noticing also that there is a sort of line here describing the edge of the saw. Right, and then there's a shadow underneath it that's quite dark. If I want to differentiate the saw again from its shadow. Where else do I need like a much darker dark? Kind of like along here, I think. Um, try not to set your hand down on the paper too much. You don't want to smudge it. But I'm just going to put in some of these darker darks. And what that's going to do is it's going to really kind of balance out the thing so it won't feel so like washed out. One of the advantages of having like dark darks and light lights is that it's going to, um, your image is going to look better from a distance. When you hang this up on a wall in a gallery, if it, if it doesn't have any dark darks, um, people are not going to walk over to it. It's honestly kind of disappointing, um, but it's true. And you need that contrast to get people to engage with your work at all. Um, let me dress this bottom here. It's a little, a little chunky. Yeah. Yeah, it'll do.
Where, where do I need to darken my darks? You see a spot that needs, where am I, where am I missing values that I need to add? Let's, let's take a second here because um, at this point in the drawing, you want to kind of pull back from it for a second. So let's switch back to the, the regular webcam. All right, so here we are. Here is my image. What you want to do at this point is you want to get yourself some distance from it. You want to actually pin it up to the wall and say, huh, where did I land it and where do I need to make some changes? So looking at it just then and there, did you guys see anything? Did you notice anything that wasn't quite where it needs to be? I already see a couple of things that are bugging me. I feel like, I don't know if this is just like the perfectionist in me. Bring it. Could potentially just be. Um, I feel like some of the cloth, like on to the left of the candlestick could use a little bit yes. more, like, like above the shadow kind of, I think could use like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that got buffed out a little bit in the blending process. Yeah. Yeah, so That's another thing that I'm noticing that this is kind of bugging me now that I looked at it, um, and I wanna make sure that there's a distinct shadow, right? This, this candlestick has a clear edged shadow and I don't wanna to be totally, um, and that fa shadow is affected by the curvature of the fabric. So I kind of want to put in that like a shadow shape, right? And then the other thing that I noticed was that this area down here entirely is one shade darker, right? Like this isn't, this is white cloth and then this is like cream colored cloth, right? And like I treated them both like they were white cloth. When in fact there's a difference between the two of them. Annoying, I know. Let me just push it back a little bit. That already feels better to me. I think that helped. Right. So that feels a good bit better. I'm going to blend it out a little bit to just get that like nice mid-tone. Anything else people are noticing? Please don't be shy. This isn't like, oh, telling your teacher that you've screwed up. This, we're looking for areas that didn't quite get fully addressed. You know? You can't hurt me with your feedback. I will, my feelings will not be hurt. All right, well, it's just Selena and I troubleshooting this, this document together. Thank you, Selena. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm trying. I feel like I'm still kind of trying to figure out what mine is missing. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I know. I just want to refer to my artwork as a document as if we're in a sort of corporate meeting. You know, I was like, hmm, do you have any input on this document? Yes. Yes, I do. Thank you. <laughs> We were just kind of reinforcing some of those shadows that got blended out in that business just then. Um, kind of like re-emphasizing a couple of those shadows now that they're um, a little bit more of a mixed tone going on in the page. And I also have, I'm noticing this shadow here. Okay. 
Oh boy, fabric is great, guys. This is so much fun. This is so much fun to draw. Don't you, I can't even, I can't even contain myself. I love it. Y'all are in for a treat. Awesome. Fabric, there it is. So much fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, let's see, where else? Now there are areas that are like bright white. And so if I wanted to, I could kind of like say, okay, well, if this little spare spot here is bright white, then the areas around it are actually like a really light off white. And I can kind of work a little bit more at that. And I can really kind of, um, kind of consider. And it's nice to sort of be able to kind of push yourself to see what you can do. Like how much blending can I get in here and how soft can I make this look, this, this fabric. You know, um, just remember, I know some of you will be tempted to blend with your fingers. Don't, do not blend with your fingers. And that's because it will rub oils into your artwork and that'll be hard. For the your artwork will have oils in it. Don't do that. Here I have some really soft folds. Okay. Okay, so this is coming together. Um, I'm looking at it here. At this point, the changes you make to your drawing are going to be a little bit more subtle. And that's just part of being at this stage in your drawing process, right? You may be changing some things about like placement and like alignment and stuff like that. But for the most part, you've got it kind of down and it's just a matter now of smoothing, building in your val values and kind of like adjusting lightness and darkness. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a second and look at it. All right. I think that this is perfectly good for um, that first drawing. Okay. I think this is, I think this is in a good place. Um, I still have some concerns about the shape of the bottom of this thing. I feel like I kind of so I'm gonna look at it right side up and see if um, it looks different to me. Wow, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fret about it. It's only so much. Uh, so Natalie, I see you have a question in the comments here. Um, um, for this particular assignment, I want you to try to use the white of the paper. We're going to have assignments later on where we'll use the white charcoal or the Conti um, to place in highlights. Um, 
In this particular instance, let's try and use the white of the paper. So um, 